Whatnot's Reactor Core. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, Hello. how are you? I'm doing fine. How's your weekend, Kyle? My weekend has been pretty good. I've been playing some video games, working on some mm. podcast stuff. It's, it's, it's been good, but, but I'm tired. I'm like, yeah, I just, I just want to sleep. But <laughs> I am doing good. How about yourself? I, I'm doing fine. Just trying to recoup energy before the work week ahead. There you go. Good stuff. Well, this week, this time on the React uh -huh. Core, we are here to talk about Peacemaker, the brand mm. new DC Comics based show out on HBO Max, uh, which is a spinoff of the Suicide Squad movie that recently came out. Uh, I'm super excited to talk about this. I I have been like chomping at the bit like someone please talk <laughs> about this with me. It's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and Melissa, you started it late, but you caught up just in time uh, to catch the finale and then be, be here on yeah. the recording. Uh, so well, I don't you. know if I started it late. I think I started it like within the first week it was on. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was within the first like a week or two, but I had seen like because they, they released the first three, like all right yeah. at the same time. And I know the first time we kind of convened about it, I was like, I had seen the first th three and you were like, well, I've seen the first one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's good. I'm happy to be here uh, and talk about Peacemaker. So mm -hmm. I, I think first things first, I, let me just get like a, a two sentence. It, that might be too short, but just like real brief. Like, what did you think of the Suicide Squad? The movie? I thought the Suicide Squad was very fun, very stylish. I did find Peacemaker intriguing. I like that he was a character who had a code. He had a goal. More so than the other members of the squad who were just doing this because they were ordered to, because they were trying to survive. He does have sort of a very limited, very twisted vision of what peace is. But the fact that he's like, I want peace as a general concept to exist and I'm going to do anything it takes to achieve that, I thought was an, an interesting character dynamic to have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I really enjoyed uh the suicide squad mm. i i knew with james gunn writing and mm -hmm. directing it 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 would have been a blast uh th there were more blasts than i expected in that <laughs> one it was a little more go gory and 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 stuff like that but yeah it it was i i had a lot of fun watching that i think that's up there with one of the best dc movies yeah. Um, and then, yeah, they were making this show, but I was iffy. I was hesitant. Mm. I was like, mm, I don't like Peacemaker as a character. Uh, mm. You're right. He does have a code that does make him a little bit more interesting than some of the other characters because of that. But I just he just didn't seem like a good guy. He was just like, I, I don't know. It was like, man, they're making a whole show based on him. Like, you have a lot of work to make me like want to watch this. Mm. Uh, and the show nailed it. The, the yeah. show knocked it out of the park, which I was not expecting at all. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this show. I think this is one of, if not the best thing that DC has made recently. Mm -hmm. I think this is better than the suicide squad but i guess that's got, got, like uh, that's a yeah. weird comparison there because it's a mm. spin-off of the same thing but uh i think this is better than any of the marvel tv shows we've gotten <laughs> it certainly know, feels a lot like, more cohesive it's more cohesive it's more complete uh mm. it doesn't feel like much was left on the cutting room floor or mm -hmm. got pushed around because of covid or like a, th there were a number of marvel shows that were both really really good in terms of their concept and the acting yeah. and stuff like that but there's bits of them that just feel incomplete like something has yeah. happened something was missing mm -hmm. uh 
Um, Mm -hmm. And this does not have that feeling at all. Uh, So I'm excited. What did you think about the show? Uh I had a lot of fun. I, I've enjoyed James Gunn's work a lot on the Guardians of the Galaxy films. They're personal favorites. They mean a lot to me. I like that he's from St. Louis. He's a, a hometown boy. I admire I'm that from, about yeah. him. Yeah, they'll put in a little Easter egg now and then. I'm very happy that Peter Cole's also from Missouri. I've never had another hero from Missouri I could look up to. In the Suicide yeah. Squad, and um, <laughs> in this show, like in the first episode, they go to that restaurant and they mention it's on Manchester Road, which is um, it could be anywhere, but that is a major road running through St. Louis that I think went by the area of town he would have grown up in. Like, hey, that's, awesome. this, that's our Manchester. Yeah, that's so cool. That's yeah, I, I got a lot out of the show emotionally. I think it's way more sincere and and thoughtful and surprisingly warm and emotional than i would have expected yeah i mean I, this is something that james gunn does have a pattern of guardians of the galaxy films they're very irreverent but they are also very touching and that's what i got out yeah. of this show also if you if you if you also found peacemaker to be an, not a great guy but an intriguing character the show's got plenty for you. If you didn't like like Peacemaker, I think the show also has plenty for you. It really interrogates like yeah. why he is who he is, you know, what bad things he's done, what good qualities there are about him. You know, even if he's got this very limited view of, of good and evil, he's at least a character who's always honest. He's never really lying about anything. You could look up to him for that, at least. He's not going to uh, double cross you. <laughs> yeah, He's... Yeah, to, to have a show that looked at this character in context of what was his upbringing, what were his surroundings, how does he feel about them, uh, what, when you put him in new surroundings with new people, how do they affect him, how does he yeah. affect them, how does he grow, how does he change, how does he break away from that? It was a, a good journey to see. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is one thing that I so I I'm aware of James Gunn's work outside of the comic book stuff. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen much of it. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen bits and pieces of Slither, but not much. Um, and I I know he has a background in trauma and yeah. this kind of cinema that is kind of there for shock value, right? And I think it was really neat to see some of that return in this show. Just this really mm. bloody, really gory kind of, oh, my God, they actually yeah. did that and showed it. And it was uh, neat and interesting and fun. <laughs> right. Um, but it 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 has this shock value to it. And I mm-hmm. think it'd be really easy for. Uh, people who li- who like that kind of or not like, but people who make that kind of cinema and those kinds of movies and shows to not really do anything else outside of that. The, the like to, mm-hmm. to have their whole show be shock value. Oh my god, we did chop this guy's head in half and it exploded. And there's blood everywhere and there's this and that. But like you said. There is this side to James Gunn's work that is very sincere, very emotional, Mm -hmm. has very strong character work and the bonds that that characters you you might not expect to create one have. And I think that's a a strength of his work in general, but Mm -hmm. especially in this show. Because they they I thought they had a lot, a lot of work to do to kind of redeem this character. And I, I say that word hesitantly because they don't really redeem this character, but they do make it a much more enjoyable show. He's oddly mm. charming. You do want mm. to follow him in his adventures to see the stupid stuff that he he he, he does. Um, but they, they make you care about him too which Mm. i I was not expecting at all so good on them i enjoyed this show a lot i thought it was fantastic Mm. so good stuff good stuff uh well now that we have kind of spoiler free stuff out of the way uh i think we will take a quick break for housekeeping uh and then when we come back we will dive into spoilers 
and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So we will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, especially those at the $5 tier. Uh, so thank you to Sam for supporting us Thanks, for so Sam. long. We love you. We, pr- we appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cool things that we have been up to here at The Whatnots. Um, Melissa, you and I just recorded uh-huh. a podcast on the podcast Brimstone Valley Mall. <laughs> it is yep. an audio drama, a comedy set in the 90s, the late 90s, about a bunch of demons that work at a mall uh, and have to find one of their missing band members before they play mm-hmm. the Y2K party. Uh, yeah, that was a blast. That was good. It's fun. very fun. It it was indeed uh, on the video game front. Uh, we have been playing Horizon Forbidden West, which just came out this past week. Uh, so go check out Crossplay if you want to hear some of our initial thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, and then on the the Captain's Log, our our weekly off topic show, Melissa, you you showed me a building here in Richmond that I didn't know existed, but I feel like I should have. Um, right, <laughs> <laughs> which is a, a, a weird way to. Put that, but yeah, you you have an a, a interest in retail spaces and buildings and stuff like that, and it you you showed me this one that I feel like as an art student I should have known yeah. about this, and it, it was there, but uh, it it was it was a good building, one of the best, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> we also talked a lot about the new trailer for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. If you're into comic books. You're into Marvel, uh, and we speculated Indeed. about what characters might show up in that movie. We yeah, absolutely did. Speaking of that, we did a trailer reaction to that yeah. new Doctor Strange uh, trailer as well. That's on our YouTube channel uh, for here on the Reactor Core. Um, and we also did one for Jordan Peele's Nope. Oh, so yes. We have that yes. Up as well. Tra- trailer reactions are always fun to <laughs> do. Uh, the, yeah. the nope trailer was very good it's just been overshadowed in my mind by everything in the multiverse of madness trailer. <laughs> yeah yeah there you go i think that's about it for housekeeping mm. uh so let's get on to spoilers let me hit the button here bam spoilers here we are uh-huh. where do you want to start with this um, um. I, I guess we we, we kind of do our broad stroke uh play by play of this yeah. one so i guess we can kind of start with that here yeah um, i think when we left peacemaker at the end of the suicide squad he killed rick flag it seemed like he he felt bad about that like that was a move that he regretted and he did it with the hopes of stopping that information about starro getting out to the people because in his mind mm-hmm. this would disturb the peace this is a giant wild space alien that it would maybe hurt people to know about and hurt them to know that that was being kept a secret from them. Like, let's just keep keeping the secret. That seems easier for everybody. Yeah. He yells Rick Flag. He's injured. He's he's put in the hospital and the show opens with him uh, being healed, getting out of the hospital and being placed with a new sub team of Task Force X. 
It's uh, John Economos and Amelia Harcourt, who you remember from The Suicide Squad. They've got a leader Mm -hmm. named Mern, and they've got Leota Adebayo, who is Amanda Waller's daughter, who Amanda Waller put her specifically... Yeah, it's put her specifically on this mission. This is not what she does. She's gotten that sort of training, but she has not worked in this field. And Leota need, um, Amanda Waller needed somebody on the inside sent in her daughter, and she's keeping this a secret. She, no, I'm not related to Amanda Waller. Don't know her. Who's that? I'm, I'm just here as like another, another tech scared. person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Leota also named after James Gunn's mom. Oh. Huh. There you go. Yeah. I did not know yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's my grandma's name, and, like, you never run into other Leotas. It's a very rare name. Interesting. Okay. You learn something new every day. Um, mm. Yeah, so he, he gets put on that team, and it, they're kind of like, yeah, you helped us out with uh, Starro in, in the movie, but look, you've barely put a dent into your sentence here. So uh, you're still technically ours to do with yeah. what you want. So he's now helping them out with this thing called Project Butterfly. Uh, and they, they happen to meet at this restaurant in town to kind of discuss it and bring him on board. They eventually get their own hiding place. Uh, mm. but this is kind of the s- setup of the show. They are out to find these things called butterflies and Mm. Mern, who kind of leads the team is being real cagey about what that is exactly like a like a you'll know when you see it kind of thing i'm Mm. not at liberty to say exactly what it is um and we find out it's aliens Ah! yeah Alien invasion is happening. Uh, they are these like butterfly looking a- 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 aliens are coming to Earth. They're infiltrating people and they will like go in their mouth and like live in their brain and control. Yeah. Them, uh, and stuff like that. So it's their their job to find them and kill them and get them out, protect people, make sure this secret does not get out. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I. I I like the setup a lot. I think it's pretty standard, pretty simple, right? Of just like, hey, we have a mission. We have some people to kill. uh, Let's go kill them. And yes, when they if they kill the host body, if they kill the human, the yeah, alien cannot survive. So it will escape. They can mm. kill it then that way. Or if they shoot these people in the head, yeah. like in the skull where this thing is occupying it, it'll just do it all in one fell, fell swoop. Mm. Um, but man, I I like the, t- the team that they have yeah. set up. So this team is kind of the one that rebelled against uh, Amanda yes. Waller, which is why she's mostly out of the picture there and mm. don't trust her uh, and why she doesn't trust them and sends her mm-hmm. daughter to be on the t- team. But man, Adebayo is, I think, one of the shining stars of yes. this show. Uh, just... It, it, with her being a bigger black g- 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 girl, I think she yeah. v- 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 very immediately in people's minds is, oh, she's like not cut out for this. She's not supposed to be here. Um, and that is kind of a running theme here uh, in, in this show of of people not really looking to her as a capable person. Um, or, mm. or, or, n- n- not that, but just not not capable in this specific yeah setting. Se- 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 she doesn't think, and she she has been through like her mom put her through training, but she did not choose this life. She mentions right. that she had to take this job that her mom gave her because she lost her other job, and we learned she was working at a dog shelter in Gotham City <laughs> <laughs> that lost its yep. nonprofit funding. So like she she knows everything in theory. Yeah, but sh- this is not her life in practice. And she struggles right. a lot with the the violence and the secrets and the treachery that comes with this job. Yeah. 
yeah, she seems to have a pretty strained relationship with her mm. mom of just like, no, you're not going to force me into doing this stuff. I don't want to do. I don't think it's right. Uh, like, like it, it mm -hmm. seems like it's that kind of thing. So she was like, I'm, I'm going to go do something that I want to go do and work with I I animals and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's that's her. But she is she is very capable. She's strong. Um, yeah, she I, I think is she's she's interesting she's interesting to me because i think in a weird way she kind of mim not mimics but mirrors peacemaker that she is yeah. also someone who will speak her mind and is very honest with things maybe not right away but will will usually do things like that very quickly and and just say what she thinks or what she thinks she needs to say mm -hmm. And is like, that's what I believe. Like, I'm not going to yeah. move from that, that, that spot. And I liked that, that she is this kind of same but different thing to mm. Peacemaker there. I thought that was fascinating. Because um, yeah, by the end a of lot this of... show, they do have a connection between the two yeah. the of them. She is the second lead of the show, I'd say, after Peacemaker himself. And they become... Yeah very close friends by the end of the show after eagly his pet eagle he says she is his best friend absolutely don't tell vigilante yeah, and she, that <laughs> right and she does have this parallel story where she also has this overbearing controlling toxic exactly. parent who she felt has been wrecking her life but she also looks at peacemaker and knows that he has it worse. <laughs> like she's got some relationship with her mom, even if it is strained, but she's like, Peacemaker's dad is a bad guy. Like he needs to be out of the picture entirely. We have to get yeah. Peacemaker away from him. Yep. Yep. And indeed. Yeah. I, I liked her a lot when we first uh, get introduced to her and she's uh, just like try like she is like stereotypical, like first day on the job. Like, hey, everyone, my name is out I do this. I do that. And she's just she's cheery. She's happy, but she's like fumbling over what she mm. needs to say and do. And it's just a complete nervous wreck It is just so charming. And so like I it's it's Honey to see her in positions like that. And man, they just they nailed it. And I liked her instantly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. And I like her. She, she comes to town uh, to do this job. She's put up in some like apartment. Uh, her and her wife and their three mm -hmm. small dogs, one of whom always wears a costume. And yeah. af after a while, she like sends her wife away or just like, hey, this isn't. This job's going to be longer, more complicated than I thought it was. Like, it seems like her wife doesn't totally know what she's doing. Like, maybe it's not yeah. good that you came with me. You should go back to Gotham City. And I really like the running subplot with her and her wife, Kia, and how Kia, like, there's a lot of tension there between, like, the long hours and the lack of communication. But Kia's fairly patient and understanding. Like, I was kept expecting that storyline to have more of an ultimatum on it right or like more of a, a real turning point but it it survives yeah there's like a, a one they get reunited at the end like there's a, be, a yeah. beautiful kiss yeah. I, I like that she got to have that to have this wife and have a uh have problems there but have it be a strong enough relationship that they are able to positively work through all the problems that are there indeed uh john economos is is, is yeah. back in, in this too. He was the one uh that, that did the mocap for King Shark mm -hmm. and stuff in yeah. Suicide Squad. He, he he also still played the character that he plays in this yeah. show too. Um yeah, I I I liked him a lot. He is the kind of, like I he's another one of those characters that's like I've seen him. I've I've met people like him at yeah. my jobs. <laughs> <laughs> where he's he's just he's the IT guy. He's mm. maybe kind of a bit of a sad sack, but he's actually a really yeah. nice guy. Right. Like yeah. if you get to know him. Like he's pretty cool. Yeah. Um him with and, his wolf yeah, t-shirts, his his three wolf right. moon t-shirts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's just he's a character that I think 
ultimately gets underserved in this season here, but he does have a re- really, really good moment uh, in yes. this show revolving around his beard and whether or not he <laughs> dyes it. That is kind of one of the running jokes that Peacemaker is just like, okay, dye b- 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 beard. Right. Like, I don't dye my beard. Uh, and it turns out he does. Uh, uh-huh. But he's insecure about it. He was hoping it would make him seem more likable or cool or, you know, and, like attractive enough to g- g- get a date or something. And you find that out. And you're just like, oh, like this guy's yeah. sad and lonely. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's he's he, he's a good, fun character, t- too. So mm-hmm. I enjoyed him. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, Amelia Harcourt, who is mm-hmm. the cool, tough lady, <laughs> okay, the second in command after Mern, who is also part of overthrowing Amanda Waller and the Suicide Squad. And she's like Peacemaker the is a spy. Yeah. Peacemaker is a crush on her. She doesn't like him, but eventually they come to a, a friendship by the end of the show. That's nice. And it's her coming yep. to friendship with everybody else in the show her dynamic with leota Adebayo is also a very important part of it and those two learning to understand each other as this girl who's gotten dragged into this life never wanted any part of it has to figure out how to just do the job and survive and and amelia's just this is, has become second nature to her yeah even if it was foreign to her once like leota has to kill somebody and Amelia is like commiserating with her about it. And she says, you know, the first time I had to kill somebody for the job, I was so stressed out. I didn't have my period for three months, <laughs> which is something that I imagine would happen to you if you were in that much distress. And I'm right? happy that that element of the situation got touched upon. And it was a really yeah. good detail of her story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. She seems like the kind of character that has gotten like her her job is now her life in the way that mm. her job has taken over so much that you yes. don't really get to know much about her uh but because she is so competent at her job because she is i think by default the hot attractive one right yeah. she she is likable in that sense um that's like oh she seems cool like she mm-hmm. she's she's attractive. She can do all these flipping backflip kick stuff. She can fight. She can do all the gun stuff like that is the like Black Widow style character. Yeah. The, the, the super spy. Um, but he, yeah, she is more the like. Don't let anyone in on my personal yes. life. I'm going to stay walled up. And I think. Yeah, by the end of this show, she starts to open up some. There's still a lot that we don't know about her and about her insecurities or stuff like that. But she like you can see her start to be like, you know, I actually kind of like these people. Yeah, uh, she starts a group text. (sighs) Yeah, takes the picture of them as the as they're all being happy and rocking out. Great characters in in this. Marn is the the mm-hmm. next one. He's the leader of the group. Uh, very much an Amanda Waller stand-in. Um, yeah, and very cold, very strict, very much about the mission. Uh, and later we find out kind of why is because yeah. he's also been taken over by one of these butterflies, one of these aliens. Uh, and a couple members of the team kind of knew and have been keeping mm. it under wraps and stuff like that. But yeah, there's a great cast of characters in here. And I think that actor is going to be in a Marvel movie, right? He's going to be in Guardians 3. I remember reading oh, that, okay. that James Gunn cast him here and was enjoying him so much, like really admired him. And he's going to be, I think, some sort of an antagonist, antagonistic yeah. force in Guardians 3. So cool. who knows? May see him show up as the high evolutionary or somebody else. Maybe. You never know. You never Very know. good job. Yeah. And then we do also have Vigilante, who is Cannot like forget about the him. kid 
the kid brother of one of the peacemakers like old childhood friends like i guess this kid grew up like really admiring him tagging along after him he's created this whole like very serious superhero identity and like he's got like a real costume and like real battle skills but peacemaker gets out it gets out of being in prison being in the hospital he goes home and he checks his phone and it's like 200 voicemails from from vigilante kind of like the voicemails that peter parker leaves for happy hogan like i'm here if you need me just checking in any crime you want to fight together for the 87th time still haven't called me back still here (laughs) still waiting bro uh yeah that's his character in this show which is really interesting because that's not vigilante in the comics uh this is Mm -hmm. like the one character in the show outside of the cameos uh that i am somewhat familiar with uh in 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 this show and yeah i in the show adrian chase is a da he's a district no. attorney um he's like he's a political guy but yes he also moonlights as vigilante and he is he's in that kind of gray area where yeah he's maybe doing some good things every now and then but goes about it in a bad way and Mm -hmm. is fine killing people and stuff like that so to see him in this is just such a like different (laughs) version um that i i was not expecting it it took me aback at first Man, he's he's one. I think the combination of vigilante and peacemaker is just chef's kiss. (laughs) It's so good. It's so funny. They're so they're they're terrible, but they're so good. They're funny. They hate each other, but they love each other. It's just God. It's Mm. it's it's, It's very entertaining. I I love vigilante because he comes in one setting. He's like the same level of like eagerness and enthusiasm about everything. He's also a character who's like completely open, has no secrets, which Peacemaker is too, but he's like more guarded, like a little, like relatively more reserved. He has dark secrets. He has things he regrets, like killing Rick Flagg, his his family history and all this. Vigilante is just like, no, I'm here. I've killed people. I'll kill people again. You know, if the situation's right. He's more of a sociopath than like he he's, yeah. he's more like he is yeah. a serial killer, yeah. right? In the sense that he mm-hmm. has no emotion, he doesn't understand yeah. emotion exactly. He will laugh at things at the wrong time. He will try yeah. to do the things because he like there's a, a, a scene where um down the road peacemaker has to kill his d- 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 dad and. He does, and Vigilante tries to comfort him, but mm. not because he feels sorry for for him. Like he's just no emotion whatsoever. Yeah. But it's he just, just like, knows he's this supposed is a thing to do this. That people do. Yes, I'm supposed yeah. to like get closer to you and pat you <laughs> on the back. And right, so that's and what he does. He, does. he, he gets over. closer to him and pats him on the back, <laughs> and says he's doing that. Like he gives him a tender shoulder touch and says. Tender shoulder touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, I'm it's fulfilling factual. it. I'm fulfilling the activity of friend. I've checked that box. Right. Yeah. Things are a checkbox. It's factual. So you are supposed yeah. to do this. Check. I did the, the, the tender shoulder touch. Uh, yeah. Like, but he doesn't understand the purpose or the meaning behind it. Yeah. Uh, mm. Which is a, an interesting take on the character, and I kind of really like it. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, gr- yeah, and I like the there, and I like when uh, Dada Bio comes to the realization of we need to get Peacemaker's dad out of the picture. He's a very bad guy, and he's very bad for Peacemaker for our friend Chris. Chris Smith, this yeah. man who's one of our teammates and is becoming one of our friends. And she talks to Vigilante about this. And this is like the closest he ever gets to sincere emotion. Where he's, and, and like part of this is his fault that they've gotten into a yeah. sticky situation. And he's like, OK, I'm going to get myself thrown into the prison where Peacemaker's dad is. 
uh, and I am going to kill him for the sake of the peacemaker because I don't want right. this is a man I care about and as much as I care about anything I want to see him live a better life we have to get him out from under the shadow of his dad and I love that what he does to get thrown in jail is that he just goes to the jail's like employee courtyard where like all the picnic tables are and like all the guards go out there and like eat their lunch and he picks up a trash can and like throws it through a window walks right through him just like destroys jail property yeah. and is like come at me take me in <laughs> yeah god this show's comedy is spectacular just the odd situations <laughs> that everyone is in the odd mix of characters the, the way they approach the situations just the 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 stupid like this the show is plagued in the very best sense is plagued by just useless tangents of conversation yes. yeah of of just like all right like we need to focus on the mission all of that stuff hey did you hear about butt babies like i i, I hear that <laughs> butt babies are and they just go off on that it's just like did, what and they have a, like a serious yeah. arg argument like no that wouldn't happen because this and it's like that is the show and it's so funny yeah so often they will like stop a scene to have a conversation where one character is like Oh, I thought you said this. No, why would I say that? That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Well, you know, if you look at it this way, it kind of makes sense. Like, it's this repeated <laughs> formula over and over again. And, like, I understand that it that works. could, like, wear on somebody's nerves sometimes. But I, I like that the but show it's... gives time to, like, that back and forth dialogue between these yeah. different uh, combinations of characters it reminds me a lot of right. one of my favorite bits in the suicide squad at the very beginning when that like team a is being sent to the beach and then they all get killed but they're like flying there in the, in the helicopter and uh, i think it's blackguard looks over at weasel and says what kind of dog is this and somebody yells at him like this weasel Are you kidding me it's not a dog and blackguard says very sincerely Dude, I don't know every kind of dog. <laughs> How do I know this isn't a dog? Have you seen every kind of dog <laughs> out there? Like, it's, it's, it, like, logically. Yeah. Makes sense. And, but right. it's like, it's, it's logical, but there, it is stripped away of all common sense. If, if that yes. makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just <laughs> none it. of that. <laughs> <laughs> so good but i i think you you uh, hit the nail on the head of why it still works and works continuously is it's it's always a different combination of characters yeah. it's peacemaker and someone else it's uh -huh. peacemaker and vigilante with someone else right they like they it's always a new situation uh, it's not just the same two characters going at it over and over again. I, I, I think the, the 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 one that is in there the most is Peacemaker and Vigilante just because of yeah. how close they are. Yeah. Right. Or but maybe one of them it, with Economos who often has to like play the straight man against somebody else. Right. Yeah. So it it's it manages to stay entertaining and fresh and stuff like that i liked it a lot but let's talk yeah. more about these aliens these butterflies before, before we do there's one more person the one more important character on the good guys team who is eagly the eagle yep. <laughs> just gotta give it up for eagly and this was a bit that was in the trailer where eagly like wraps his wings around peacemaker when he comes home and he hasn't seen him in years he gives him a hug and peacemaker's like i can't believe an eagle's hugging me Nobody's around to see this. I can't take a picture. And he like tells out a bio about this. And she's like, that didn't happen. There's no way an eagle can hug a man. And his relationship with Eagly is sincere. Eagly, for as much as an eagle can display emotions, does seem to love Chris. You know, the, yeah. and like when Eagly yep. is injured, like Chris, like prays, like I will do anything to do anything on earth to like save eagly when eagly's better he like hugs chris again and then adebayo's out there watching this she's like oh my god it's a miracle what he said was true an eagle can hold a man 
And then like her wife calls her and she picks up the phone and she's like, Kia, you won't believe this. I'm seeing an eagle hug a man. And then Kia's like, really? <laughs> like she's also <laughs> excited about this second hand. And it was during a scene where you were expecting this tense phone call of, Honey, why aren't you answering my phone calls? Where are you? How deep into this job yeah. are you? I need you to come home. We're, you know, we're in big trouble here. <laughs> but instead, she's like, an eagle hugged a man? Wow, honey. <laughs> so funny. So good. Yeah, eag eag eagly is fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just like a uh, just lovable member of the team who I think you often forget about, but he is there yeah. helping out. He's there. Also, uh, Peacemaker's voicemail outgoing message is, hey, you've reached Peacemaker. If you've got a message for me or Eagly, leave it after the tone. Yep. Yep. Indeed. Indeed. Well, let's talk about these aliens. Yeah. A little bit more. Because... Uh, yeah, I, I think so. From what I heard, one of the first film or one of the first scenes that they filmed in in the show was the scene of John Cena in nothing but his tidy wa 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 whiteies uh, after yes. this uh, this date with this this random chick that he p p p yeah. picked up, uh, right? And he puts a record on and just starts. Dancing around the room in nothing but his underwear, hanging into a, a, a hair brush and is just living it up. Just one yes. of the most fun scenes of the entire show. And apparently that was like one of the first things that they filmed. Like John's Haina, just it, the first thing he has to do is strip and dance around. Um, and he he knocked that scene out of the park, but apparently James Gagan was like, when I filmed this scene, this is how I knew that John Cena was perfect for this role. Yes. I made a, a good yes. choice in casting him in the Suicide Squad because um, it's it just, uh, God, he's... I, I, I don't really consider John Cena a great actor. I know he's been in a number of things now he he's a certain flavor mm -hmm. right that I, th I think you yeah. have to get used to used to i i've enjoyed him whenever i've I, seen him there's I something agree. about him yeah. that's like very eloquent and like very precise <laughs> like very crisp sure sure yeah but man watching this scene was just perfect and yeah. this is also the same scene where we first discover uh, the butterflies and we kind yeah. of find out what they are. This woman starts like screaming and hissing mm. at him and just goes completely ra rabid trying to kill him. Um, and yeah, there's a big fight scene, small chase uh, scene that happens out of, of that. But then, yeah, we eventually learn that there are these little, I don't know, like size of a bagel. I, I don't know. Sure. Uh, alien. The size of a butterfly would probably be something that I should have said, but I went with bagel instead. They're, um, they're approximately a star of size. <laughs> the star of the clips on your face about that tall. Sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think what we, we eventually learn is that they are a race of a aliens whose planet has basically gotten destroyed and they're looking for a mm. new home. Uh, they are searching the stars and they c come across Earth and the like natural food and stuff there they can't really sustain themselves on, but the atmosphere and just the potential that humans yeah. have they know they could take them over and help them too mm -hmm. um so that is kind of the the mission of the aliens is to come to earth so they can survive but then also to help humans have better technology and government mm -hmm. and this and that and just you know improve everyone's lives yeah unfortunately the way to do that is 
basically by killing them, by taking them over mm. uh, and, and stuff like that. So, that, you know, there's not much that can really be helped with that. So humans not to not taken too kindly to getting taken over by aliens. Mm. But we mm -hmm. see one alien in particular uh, kind of end up being the queen of them. Like yeah. Later. And uh, they end up capturing it. And for a while, John Cena's like feeding it on this like honey like substance yeah. that they all feed on. Um, and it ends <laughs> up. They, they figure out that it like it is intelligent. It can communicate. And Peacemaker's like, OK, uh, one tap for yes, two taps for no. And him and Vigilante are there. We're like, we're going to learn about this. We're going to ask it a series of yes or no questions. And Vigilante says, what's your favorite color? And he's like, <laughs> we do not need to know this. It's a, how are they going to answer with a yes or no question? And he's like, OK, make it a yes or no question. Is your favorite color teal? Yes or no? Great. We're going to work great. through all the colors, but it's starting useless. with the teal. Waste of time. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Not not like, why are you on Earth here? Like, no, if you had asked that, color. that's Must at least understandable, right? Like, dude, like, I see what you're getting at, but it's not a yes or no question, right? Uh, or just the fact that when vig 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 not Vigilante, when Peacemaker is asking mm -hmm. questions, he's asking them in relation to movies that he's seen here like are you yeah. trying to take over the world like the aliens in independence day or in this <laughs> movie and like once he runs out which he does very fast he's like crap mm. uh what other movies have aliens in them and he's just stuck like i don't know what else yeah. to, to, to ask it <laughs> So, yeah, but uh, that one ends up es es escaping uh, and taking taking over the main detective uh, that is yeah. on the show, which I, I, li I liked her a lot, too. I really enjoyed her taking over. Great performance. Yeah. I hope I get to see that actress again. But yeah, throughout the series, towards the beginning we see these two detectives. It's Detective Sophie Song and whatever her partner's name is. Uh, and they're like investigating, uh, you know, who killed this woman in this parking lot. They bring in uh, Peacemaker's dad and they realize it's not him. He should be in jail, but like they can't get him for this actual crime. They have to arrest Peacemaker. So we check in with them frequently and they've got the, <laughs> this banter where like one of them will make a joke and the other one will just, like they're continually exasperated with each other. And like yeah. uh, Chris's dad will like say something terrible and then the, the, you know, the partner will try and like throw an insult back at him, but it doesn't make sense. And she's like, why would you say that? Why wouldn't you say this? Like they, it se yeah. they seem very <laughs> exasperated good. with each other. But then once this butterfly takes over her body and like is going to take over everybody else's bodies, like call all of its butterfly brethren and take over like every person in, in this jail. The, the butterfly, like, in Detective Song's body turns and looks at her partner and says, I can sense that she really did care for you. <laughs> it's a surprisingly yeah. emotional moment. I was very happy that these minor characters got to have that little bit of an emotional storyline. It seems like they don't get along, but secretly they really do value each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I think in the same way that we kind of mentioned that the show takes a character like Peacemaker, who's, mm. you know, maybe abrasive and uh, yeah. you might not like him, right, all all that much. And then by the end of the show, turns him into so someone who, despite you maybe not liking him all that much, he's an interesting character and you want to follow him and see what happens yeah. next. Uh, I think it does the same thing with the antagonists of this show here, because, yeah, alien invasion. Hell no. Get the fuck out. Like, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're just going to start murdering all of you guys. But then uh, 
when they find out that, like, all right, the best way to kill them all is to kill their food supply. They only have a yeah. specific thing that they can eat. And um, they they track it down to what they call a cow. Um, yeah. And they, they do the, the joke of, holy cow. And they're like, exactly. <laughs> um, but if the, the 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 plan is then to destroy this cow which is the food source to get the to get the aliens off of their planet if they have no food source then they're just going to mm-hmm. die off hopefully they'll just go somewhere somewhere else but then once they introduce all, all of that, that's when they start to introduce like, well, n- no, they're not planning an invasion like they're on the run. They need help. Like mm-hmm. this is like they're desperate for stuff. They're they're trying to do a good thing. They they want to survive. Yes. But they see like, hey, we also have the like technological know how to help earth and help mm-hmm. humans and so they're trying to do this good thing which like i mentioned before to take over a human you still kill them so it's yeah right they haven't really thought that all the way through but it does a good job of at least giving you pause of like oh Mm. it is there a like? Do we need to destroy this cow? Is there another way to do this? Yeah. Like, is there some kind of understanding we can come to so that you guys do just leave on your own here? Which mm-hmm. wouldn't make for a great finale where you expect a big fight and stuff like that. But right, like it gives you a sense of pause of just like yeah, oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, I I like that. Uh- final confrontation a lot that this this is the butterfly that peacemaker was keeping in a jar and feeding honey yeah. and the the butterfly in detective song's body is like i got a sense of who you are i think you are a good soul in there that you want to help people you want to bring about peace this is how we do it do the, in order to get the humans to behave we have to like go inside the heads of their leaders and control them and like kill them and we're they're just like a meat suit that our butterflies walk around in and we make the important political decisions so that the world has a future. And it's, uh, uh, you're wondering if he is going to side with them. Like they have appealed to his code. Their actions might lead to the greatest amount of peace for the greatest amount of people. But he ends up, um, uh, killing detective songs body in a way that the butterfly like can still escape. You know, like the butterfly flies back to him at the end and he gives it like the last bit of honey that he has. Uh, Bio and Adebayo asks him about it. He's like, I knew that if I followed them, they would hurt you guys. They would hurt his teammates as part of their mission to keep this secret, even if they spared him so that he could help them. He's like, I wouldn't. I don't want that for you. He's like, I will not let my friends be hurt, which might not have been something he said. And. The Suicide Squad. This is the first time he's had friends that have meant that much to him where he is willing to bend and break his code to serve his interpersonal friendships. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah, he is. He is starting to change. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if in further seasons of this show, that's the kind of plan is like by the end of the show, he is now a hero and he's worked off his sentence and he is truly fighting for good. And he understands mm. right the stuff that he did wrong in his. It, I, I don't know if that's the, the plan. I, I, I don't think that would like it's it's one of those things. I think the show needs to go a certain ways down that path, right? Uh-huh. Just as a character journey, but I I don't know if reaching the end of that path is the satisfying conclusion that mm-hmm. we would ultimately want from a, a character like this from a show a show like this. There, um, but this is it it. I will say that the show gives me hope because a while back they also announced a Green Lantern yeah. show. And they, if I'm not mistaken, they said the show would focus 
on Guy Gardner, who mm. is a green lit. Long story short, he, when Hal Jordan got the power oh. ring, that ring was actually meant for Guy G -G 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 oh. Gardner. Uh, but he ended up getting hurt or some, something, and so the ring recognized that, and how J Jordan was the second cho choice. So it went to him in in instead. But Guy Gardner, what a fucking douchebag, man. Like, he, <laughs> he is, like, your typical, like, womanizing, misogynistic bro of, of that. Mm -hmm. Everyone just hates him. And so when, when they announced that the show would lar largely be centered around him, I was like, I, I don't want to watch that. Like, I, mm. I, that's a character that I really don't like. And here we are in a sh show where I watched the, the Suicide Squad and left that being like, I don't like Peacemaker. Like, he's not a good character. I don't want to follow him for an entire show. But then instantly the show was was like, actually, we can make you care about him like we, we mm -hmm. know how to do that and did it effectively. Um, yeah. So it I think there gives is me hope for more DC projects down the road. Yeah, I think there's value in looking at a very flawed, problematic character and finding sure. out why are they like this? Uh, there's, there's, is there something toxic in their surroundings that has kind of bent them this way? If we affect their surroundings, how does that affect them? I would, I think there's value in a story of somebody in learning that they need to improve themselves and figuring out how they can do that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and then I, I think just to get back to the aliens here, uh, to be clear, Mern, who also yeah, was yeah. taken over uh, by one of these butterflies, uh, the one that attached itself to him is he like that one recognizes the harm that the yes. butterflies are causing and is working against them. So it's not a like. Uh, oh, oh my god halfway in the season their leader got t taken out and is now a bad guy and does all this stuff no he was a butterfly from the start uh there are, as far as we know mm. um but it has been working against the rest of the butterflies there. so there, there is a distinction be between that one and the rest of them yeah yeah so. and then when the other butterflies realize that they have to take him out that he is against their main mission uh when the team finds like this little butterfly like crunched up butterfly crawling out of like the yeah. Mern corpse's mouth and Amelia Harcourt just like holds it and like they like touch hands she touches her finger to this tiny butterfly hand very sad very touching yeah moment. it really is like that is that is I think another character that got underserved, not Mern, but that mm. butterfly that was in like, yeah, I, th that beat was, yeah, especially emotional. And now I kind of wished I'd known him better. Uh, mm -hmm. and like, what is your story here? T t tell me more of that. Are, are there the butterflies more like you? Yeah, the butterflies are, Do they don't kids? know human emotions when they pilot a human, they're very sort of stoic and cold and they have like we see a butterfly take over like one of the local d police chiefs and like the somebody has been killed and this is like a post credit scene of that butterfly and that man being like okay you have to act sad and he's making these like cartoonish exaggerated crying faces. <laughs> but there's a conversation early on between john and uh between um Mern and economos where Mern's talking about how like he never expresses emotions like he, he doesn't do it, but he is learning a little bit how to do it better. And he mentions that he's he, it's kind of chilly outside. And he's like, there, I just expressed an emotion to a teammate. I've never done that before. Economist is like, the emotion you expressed was chilly. Yeah. <laughs> You're cold. That's it. That's funny. Yeah. Good stuff. I also want to mention. I, I um. 
judo master. <laughs> yeah. Judo and now master. even judo master has like an emotional beat to his story where we learn that he is on the inside with the butterflies. He is not one of them, uh, but like he knows their plan and he's there to defend them and keep anybody from like finding out their secrets. And like the they're fighting judo master and judo master gets injured and they take him back to their lair. So, you know, to their, their secret headquarters so that they can like watch over him and make sure he doesn't like get back to the butterflies and then he escapes. And I really yeah. like the scene where there's just like two guys showing up at the gas station and they like turn a corner around that case of propane tanks and there's silently there's, there's judo sitting master there sitting, sitting there eating a bag Cheetos. of flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which he eats constantly. And I really like MT's theory about this on the new Rockstars videos where he's like, Judo Wester does not want a butterfly in them. So he wears a costume with like no butt access. So no butterfly can crawl up his butt. And he constantly eats spicy snacks so that they don't want to crawl in his mouth. He's making himself immune to butterflies through flame and hot cheetos interesting yeah but yeah at the very end of the the series when like all of these butterflies you know all their their human bodies have been destroyed uh uh, judo master walks out there and and he cries like like even if they weren't like friends it seems like these are the people he's been surrounded with for years does he know anybody else like that's been his whole life his whole purpose for a while yeah, that or, or he Single just bought in, from Judo Master. In, into this this idea of like, hey, hey Earth could be a lot yeah. better. Like we could yeah. stop, uh, d- you know, all all sorts of stuff. We could save the environment. We could have better governments that actually care about its people and and stuff like that. He just sees this as a lost opportunity to do stuff like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he what will become good... of Judo Master? He's still out there. He is still out there, wandering around. He was, uh, the, like, I I feel like his character, though, was, like, didn't need to be Judo Master, if that makes sense. Like, it, it could have been anyone, kind of. Any okay. kind of random villain. That was the, the only thing that I didn't necessarily care for like i i i liked him i liked his character would have been nice to see more of 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 him and get that story of like why he sided with them because mm-hmm. it just kind of seemed random they picked someone for the memes right like let's just get someone who's really short and can like actually has fighting skills as opposed to peacemaker who's just really big and muscly (laughs) and and right and and so it's just like let's just let's let's go with uh i don't know judo master there you go yeah there are a lot of interesting appearances of other dc characters i I like whenever Chris goes to see his dad, his dad's got this neighbor, this old man who's always out there yes. clipping his hedges or whatever. The which best I think character peacemaker in the show. <laughs> is, and he says, do you have a coterie of supervillains? If you're a real hero, you would have a coterie of supervillains. He's just this crotchety <laughs> old neighbor that, that <sighs> just is is like secretly interested in Peacemaker and uh, his f- father, knowing that they have been involved in super yeah. heroics and super vi- 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 villainy stuff. And it just has questions. Just like, ha- have you met Batman? Have have you <laughs> met, like, have, what's he like? What What is that? Do you have a, 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 you say a coterie of villains? A coterie of super and then right. when Peacemaker he just has is, uh, he's, he's talking to the kids. One of them also asks, do oh, you God, have a yeah. coterie of supervillains? <laughs> it, it's like that, but like he just, Peacemaker has, you, you can tell he's had to deal with that so much. Just every mm. opportunity that that guy gets will ask something. And... Whether he's coming or going, Peacemaker knows if he is seen by that one guy, he will have to, like, answer something. So he just hates it. He's annoyed. He's just like, oh, the stupid old man again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's so funny. So good. I hope, 
hope he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I mean, he's he's in. We look. We're about an hour into recording now. We haven't even once mentioned the opening credits, but he's in that uh, that opening <sighs> credits. Which Everybody's in there. They are, but some of those characters are now dead. So. Are, are we going to get a different song and dance in season oh, two? I hope so. Uh, I, I think we are. But uh, but my, my I guess my p- 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 point is, is that despite him being such a small side character, that old man, man, man is also in the song and dance for a small bit there. It's fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. Truly really valued. Yeah, I We've got canon mentions of characters that I only know by name. I really do not know DC Comics well, but we get like Batmite and Kite Man. Kite Man, hell yeah. All this stuff is made real. Yeah, uh, I, I'm curious because the, the DC universe is uh, not less canonical, but it, it allows itself to have multiple separate canons happening at once. And I am curious if anything that we've seen happen here will have any impact on any future DC title. I don't know what would be in this timeline taking place after this. If like there's some news blurb in the background of the flash where it mentions like uh, Senator Goff has, has died of unknown circumstances. Who I, knows? I, ho- I, I hope so. I, I, I hope some of the like larger strokes mm-hmm. of just like, Hey, the existence of, new new alien species are out there yeah like you mentioned senator goff has passed away or stuff like i yeah i i hope they're just like a fish fucking joke which they probably won't say in the mainstream stuff but like if 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 you can tell that they're about to start saying it and then aquaman man like shut shuts them up like don't say it right like i i think something like that would be funny uh to put in in there and at like it's really interesting to see how the Marvel Universe kind of got started with John Favreau kind of passing the torch to Joss Whedon, who built out the kind of Avengers that like mm-hmm. real funny formula, the quipping, like all the, 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 that stuff to then see that get passed on to uh God. Why am I blanking on their their names right now? The 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 the, the Russo brothers. Yeah, uh, yeah, to get passed on to them where they do more of the like action and political intrigue and all of that stuff uh, to see that the the DC universe has kind of really floundered around uh, with that and hasn't really. I mean, they tried to bring Jeff Johns on to be a kind Mm -hmm. of unifying factor, and that didn't even really seem to work all that much. But it seems like James Gunn may have been the one to crack that. And Mm -hmm. if they can use just like some of the groundwork that he has made for the types of comedy, the types of action, the the types of character arc and and, and stuff like that, that we get. If they can use that as the groundwork to build out their stuff, I I think I mean, for all I all. Forgot to mention Zack Snyder, but that also didn't really work out all that much. He, but yeah, like all his stuff is has a consistent creative voice, but it's a consistent creative voice that has not worked on most audience members. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I just, yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hoping to see them work more with that and use James Gunn's work as a launch. <laughs> pad to uh put some s- sprinkle some easter eggs yeah stuff like that so yeah we, we, i we think the mention of green arrow we hear mention of <laughs> the flash and superman and batman I, we see I, the flash and aquaman in this and then we see a yes, stand in for them. superman and wonder woman there 
uh, which we don't really see their faces, but you at least do see yeah, Aquaman you know the silhouette. And, and the flash. Yeah. And it's them. Yeah. Uh, which, <laughs> the by the way, of... that scene was hilarious. That scene was great. <laughs> a, a very pleasant surprise at the end of this, that they got two real Justice League members at the end of the story. The joke about Green Arrow is that he goes to brony conventions dressed as the back half of Twilight Sparkle with a, a four inch butthole in the back of the costume. <laughs> and then, but what I like about this joke is that then Vigilante says, oh, yeah, so he can breathe more easily. Bigger butthole, easier to breathe in the back of a horse costume. Yeah, I understand. God, it's so dumb. Uh, uh, apparently, I I didn't see what he had to say, but apparently Stephen Amell, who's played oh, Green Arrow, uh, yeah. commented on that on that uh, some somehow. Who who knows what he's he's said. not a Twilight Sparkle fan. He's an Applejack fan. We all know this. Well, is it, uh, yeah, it <laughs> may have been something like that. It may have been so, something about challenging John Cena to a wrestling. I don't know. Stephen Amell is a big wrestling fan and has like oh, been nice. in some some stuff. And he's now on a wrestling show, like a show about wrestling, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So there there may have just been some some smack t- 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 talk with that. Um but yeah, even the the like the show and tell thing at school, like, have you met Wonder Woman? He goes, yeah, I saw her at a uh, <laughs> at a party one time, and she was I effing me the the entire t- time from across the, the room, and they're just like, whoa, okay, dude. He's like, what I said? <laughs> I said <laughs> so, yeah. Lots of good jokes, but mm-hmm. one last thing I do want to say about yeah. the the Justice League sh- sh- yeah. showing up at the end there. I'm so glad that they showed up in in yes. this. This was one of my biggest pet peeves of the very first Suicide Squad. Sc- yeah. It was a world ending event. And none of them showed up. Superman mm. didn't wasn't there to help save the world. Wonder Woman wasn't there. Flash never sh- 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 showed up. That's like the Suicide Squad is difficult to write for, in my opinion, because they're most mm. effectively used as a team that takes on missions that the Justice League never would, mm. which would be killing people, toppling g- 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 governments doing assassinations they have to be stealthy make sure they're not there Mm -hmm. right so it's never supposed to really be a world ending threat if it was Mm -hmm. the justice league would be there yeah and so the fact that this is yeah an alien invasion uh and eventually the justice league got word of this right and they showed up but they showed up late and that is what peacemaker says he's like well it's about time you fuckers showed up like god damn <laughs> and and it's just it's i was i was like yes like this is redemption this is fans service it's a good joke like they nailed it it, it was spectacular so, mm-hmm. i liked it a lot yeah i i want to mention good stuff, good the stuff. you mentioned the john cena dancing sequence which is beautiful we talk, like the week this came out, we mentioned it a little bit on the captain's log and I was talking about how I'd love to see this very muscular, very powerful body being used for joyful dance. <laughs> and I really love the scene where yeah. he plays the piano. He's going through a lot of emotions and he sits down and he plays, I think, like a Motley Crue instrumental song on the piano. And again, it's a moment of like watching this body built for action do something that isn't action. Like, do something that's more of, like, right. an, uh, an emotional expression that requires, like, a different sort of finesse and not strength. And, and then I learned that th- there was John Cena fully playing the piano. He's, a, like, a trained pianist. So good on John Cena. Multi-talented. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. It's a good beautiful stuff. scene. I was, I was happy to see that side of the character and of the performer. Now... 
has has this been confirmed for season two yet? I I saw that in um in a in a video has. in like the new Rockstars breakdown of the final episode. They mentioned and it's already been picked up for season two. Okay, cool. So my next question is then, what do you want to see in season two? Well, season one ends with Peacemaker. He killed his dad, and then his dad's spirit appears to haunt him. You know, maybe not a literal mm-hmm. ghost, but a ghost of his mind. And he, he kills the ghost, trying to get it to shut up. And then the final scene is it's Peacemaker sitting Piss out off, there on ghost. his porch. Yeah, and then his dad, like, walks up and just sits quietly beside him, doesn't say a word, which says he's still there. He's going to be haunting his son but at least he's gotten to the point now where peacemaker is enough strength over him that he doesn't say anything like he does not sure. his, his, his dad lingers over him but he's not this he's force like peace. screaming in his ear anymore yeah and so i'd like to see over the course of season two um you know, it's an unpleasant character but i did really enjoy robert patrick's performance i think he's very well cast to play he's john a great C's actor dad. yeah yeah I'd like to see him continue to show up and hopefully by the end of that season, maybe he is vanquished. You know, the, 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 we get the last of that spirit away from, from haunting Chris and Chris comes to terms with this terrible relationship with his dad and, and uh, the tragedy that happened with his brother. Maybe he goes in search of a mother figure you know, the, that he hopes may give him some sort of positive mentorship in his life. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I mean, I kind of mentioned that I thought Economos was an underserved character. I do want to see a bit more of him uh, as we continue to learn more about these characters, stuff like that. I want to see how Amanda Waller might factor in to season Mm -hmm. two now that the secret's out that that uh, her daughter is on the team. Um. We did aliens. I would I'd be interested in seeing them go to the like dark magic side of. Oh, yeah. And seeing someone like Peacemaker having to deal with that. Um, And I I think that would be like, yeah, just more like dark magic, supernatural, uh, something like that. Or alternatively, I would kind of like to see them go back to that prison that we saw in uh in this yeah house. that's why I, th- I think that was bell rave uh yeah to bring rave back some of those characters we but, saw briefly bring in calendar some, some, some man those, yeah stuff like that let's would get sean be in interesting, here but in a way that they get like i i kind of wouldn't have to see them infiltrate it for something right like that is like this is in a weird mm. way an extension of the suicide squad like this is a suicide squad uh-huh. show but it focuses just on one character uh because again he is still working off his sentence that was the whole thing of like dude you've barely put a dent into this thing so this is your next job right um so I, 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 we're going to see more stuff like that where he is on to the next job to keep working off his sentence. But yeah, I want to see them in situations again, like the Justice League isn't going to be showing up here. So to have someone infiltrate a prison and collect info on some kind of crime ring or mm-hmm. something like that, I think would be really interesting. or. Yeah, there's a Batman villain that we have in in jail, but we're trying to, like, discover some conspiracy or something that he's not talking about. But we know he has info, so we need someone to infiltrate the prison and get on his good side and do all that just to see that, like the interaction with more of cuz i mean he's he was in that prison for a while it mm-hmm. seems like so he has relationships with characters in there good good or bad uh with that so yeah i'm i'm just trying to think of like what else could they explore 
in the mm-hmm. DC universe. Yeah, this That's setting that, so. we've been in, I, it wasn't anything familiar to me. Maybe we could take this team and take them to Gotham or to Metropolis or, or Central City yeah. or like one of the recognized cities of the DC lore. <laughs> See what they can get up to there. Absolutely. Um, I, I know since this is on HBO Max, I would kind of like to see some like Teen Titans or Doom Patrol references ah, or Easter eggs. Yeah. Uh, start. I, I know those are te- are technically like n- not in the same universe, but just uh, just a t- tip of the hat would be. Yeah. Nice. I feel like, right? Do you hear about this one lady who melts her body just turns into a big puddle? She's yeah. out here fighting crime too. Yeah, if she can do, 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 do it. You can, right? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So there you go. Peacemaker season one, HBO Max. Fantastic. I loved it a Great lot. Great time. I thought really this was fun. Solid. Yeah, surprise! The great production values, shot well, ah. good, excellent use of music as always from James Gunn. I like that this had a, like a very limited palette of this like '80s hair metal that they were dealing with, but they managed to get a lot out of this one specific genre. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Liked all these characters. Truly hope to see them again, and hope they branch out of Peacemaker season two. Like I hope. Leona Adebayo is in something else in the DC universe. Sure. Yeah. Or at least gets like name dropped. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, Well, there you go. I think that's all I kind of have to say on Peacemaker. Mm -hmm. So good stuff. Go check it out. Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit, that's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T, and listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. There you go. You guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Uh, I know coming up down the road here, we got the uh, the Obi Wan show. We got Moon oh, Knight. Yeah. We got all that stuff. Um, the so Batman I, in the two Batman. short weeks. Yeah, yeah we'll be uh, doing stuff on all of that. I am gonna be in the process of moving. Yes, uh, kind of at the end of March, which is right when Moon Knight starts. Uh, so it might be a little wonky for when we get our reactions up. I'm not sure exactly, um, but we will try our best to get that stuff out, uh, in a timely fashion. But yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, well, yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this. Uh, so thanks for checking it out and we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.